I am Dr. Rashid Ahmed from the Department of Physics of Kohat University of Science and Technology. In the subject of particle physics with the course code PHY452, we are at the lecture number 21 and the topic is spin and orbital angular momentum. All the fundamental particles carry spin and have orbital angular momentum, but because of the quantum mechanics, we know that the spin and orbital angular momentum could not be specified simultaneously. So, we have to uh, derive uh, some uh, quantities uh, which are based upon spin and orbital angular momentum that could be simultaneously specified and then work with them. So, in today's lecture we will see that what are these quantities which we will derive from spin and orbital angular momentum which will not be uncertain because of the quantum mechanics. So, let us start with first the orbital angular momentum. As you all know that orbital angular momentum L which is a vector quantity is equal to R cross M V where M V is the linear momentum and R is the moment arm and it is also a vector or it is a position vector and in the linear momentum velocity is a vector. So, this is the cross product of uh, moment arm and uh, linear momentum which gives us the angular momentum. But if we measure the angular momentum since it is a vector quantity it will have three components that is L x, L y and L z and all of these three components can be measured simultaneously and with a 100 percent accuracy. So, classically we can measure all three components simultaneously and with 100 percent accuracy and there is no problem uh, in, in having uh, uncertainty in among the components of the angular momentum. But the case is very different when we go towards the quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics the one component of the angular momentum is not certain with the other component. That means, if I measure L x then it produces this measurement of L x produces the uncertainty in the other components for example, L y and L z. And this uncertainty is encoded with the help of commutator relations. So, you can see over here that the L x component that is the x component of the angular momentum and its commutator with the L y component. Uh, is not equal to 0, rather it is equal to i h bar. So, that means if uh, we open this commutator, let us say the uh, opening is L x L y minus L y L x and uh, it will act on certain function this commutator. So, this commutator will act on certain function. So, if it acts on certain function, so this first term will also act first and then minus the second term will act on f. So, if I act with L x first and then with L y and calculate this uh, term and then I act with L y first and then with L x and calculate this term and if I take the difference of uh, both of them that will be equal to h bar and that is not equal to 0. It means uh, changing the order of the measurement of L x and L y uh, makes a difference and in this difference is equal is not equal to 0, but is equal to h bar. This is called uncertainty because when I measure L x first it changes the state uh, and if I measure L y second. So, it is not equal to when I, I measure L y first and then measure L y L x second. This uncertainty in the measurements of the components of the angular momentum is due to uh, uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics and this is not only among the uh, L x and L y between the L x and L y, but there it is also between other components. For example, L x and L z are also not measurable uh, simultaneously with a 100 percent accuracy, although they are measurable, but they are not 100 percent accurate because the accuracy is limited by this factor h bar. And similarly, the third set is the L z and L y. So, all the three components of angular momentum cannot be specified with 100 percent accuracy uh, and simultaneously. 
and dependently they can be. For example, I can measure LX uh, with 100% accuracy and I can compromise on LY uh, and uh, also the other way around that is I can uh, measure LY with 100% accuracy and can compromise on the LX. But if I want to measure both of them at the same time with 100% accuracy, that is not possible. And this is not because of the some um, uh, experimental uh, limitations, but this is the inherent law, uh, the fundamental law of quantum mechanics that is uncertainty principle because of which the LX and LY and similarly LX and LZ and LZ and LY, all the three components of angular momentum are uncertain together. So uh, then the question arises if these are uncertain or there are some quantities which are certain together or uh, which are derived from the angular momentum and the question is yes there are certain quantities for example the uh, square of the uh, angular momentum if I calculate the square of the angular momentum that is L square so it is the or the or in other words if we say the magnitude of the angular momentum then it is certain to measure it with the any other component of the angular momentum for example if the uh, the square of the uh, angular momentum is uh, is certain with the lz component although it is also certain with the other components for example ly and lz but uh, uh, customary we see uh, we uh, take the lz uh, and we work with the LZ or the, uh, the Z component of the angular momentum. So although the components are not measurable simultaneously, but if we take the magnitude or the square of the uh, angular momentum that is L square, then L square can be measured with 100% accuracy with the LZ. So therefore, we work with L square. So we uh, decide to work with L square rather than with the components. So L square is then uh, can be uh, measured simultaneously with 100% accuracy because its commutator as you can see with the LZ or any other component is zero. Okay, but the problem is when we measure L square then there are not all values allowed. So we cannot have all the values for L square. There, there is a set of the values which are allowed. So the next important thing is to know uh, the allowed values for the uh, the magnitude of the angular momentum. So allowed values are uh, this one that is L into L plus uh, 1 h bar square and where L is a non-negative integer and it can have values from 0, 1, 2, 3. Now the derivation of this uh, law you can find out in your quantum mechanics uh, book or you have already done this but um, uh, at the moment we will just take it uh, as uh, that the uh, L square allowed values are L into L plus 1 h bar square. So if you measure, what does this mean? It means that if you measure L square, you can find out only this value. For example, this uh, L, which is a, a non-negative integer, if you measure then uh, L square, uh, for example, for L is equal to 0, if you put L is equal to 0, it means that the value would be h bar square. And if you put uh, L is equal to 1, then the value would be uh, 1 plus 1, 2, and the, here is 1, so 2 h bar square. So these are the all allowed values uh, for the L square. So it cannot have values other than specified by this rule. So uh, possible orientations of L, you can visualize them uh, with the help of this diagram, as you can see that for L is equal to, uh, that for uh, different orientation. So this is because of the space quantization, as you can see that all these uh, values are not allowed. So only 0 or h bar or minus h bar or 2 h bar and minus 2 h bar. So because of the quantization, we can have a specific set of the values and all values are uh, not allowed for the measurement of L square. And this is the orientations, uh, uh, visual orientation of these values for L along the z axis as you can see them. Okay. So allowed values of L, what would be the allows, allowed values for L would be then uh, or any component of L is that is ML uh, H bar where ML is an also integer in the range minus L to plus L. So okay, once we have measured L square, what are the allowed values for L? These are uh, in the range minus L into plus L and ML can go from minus L to plus L and these are the uh, steps in which it, it can go. For example, it can go from minus L to then minus L plus 1 and so on reaching to the 0 and then increasing by 1 
uh, uh, to up to the L. So these are the allowed values for the L. Okay. And the total possibilities are then 2L plus 1. So you can see from here the total, uh, total possibilities for the allowed values are 2 plus L possibilities. So okay, after the uh, angular momentum as we have seen uh, that the orbital angular momentum, the components of orbital angular momentum are uncertain and we cannot measure them uh, simultaneously. So we decided to go towards L square that is the magnitude uh, or the uh, square of the uh, angular momentum uh, vector and uh, we have seen that this square is actually compatible with the any component of the angular momentum uh, because its uh, commutator is zero. So now we turn towards a spin angular momentum it and it is not very different than uh, the orbital angular momentum. In spin angular momentum again we will work with the square of it that is s square as uh, s dot because it is also a vector quantity and its components uh, it is also an angular momentum. Uh, mind you the spin is the angular momentum so its uh, components are also uncertain so therefore uh, we decide again to work with the square of the s square and uh, uh, square of the uh, spin angular momentum and these are again the similar kind of um, allowed values that is s into s plus 1 h bar square and uh, uh, now the, the possibilities are a uh, little bit different because now there are possibilities for 0, 1 over 2 so integer and a half integer both are allowed as we will see that in uh, particle physics there are uh, many particles uh, which are which have the spin 1 by 2 and these are called fermions and then there are particles with the spin 0, uh, particles with the spin 1 and particles with the spin 3 by 2. So in case of the spin the allowed values are different. Uh, these are uh, uh, integers as well as half integers and specifically uh, the particles who have uh, their spin equal to half integer are called fermions and the particles uh, who have um, their uh, spin equal to uh, integer are called bosons. So this is one of the classification uh, coming from the spin angular momentum. In the future slides I will explain in more detail uh, the uh, types or this classification of uh, fundamental particle particles based on their spin. Okay, so for a given value of s, a measurement of s z must yield an answer of the form uh, m s h bars uh, as we have seen in the case of the orbital angular momentum. So similar is the case here with the spin angular momentum where m s is an integer of uh, or half integer whichever s is in the range minus s and plus s and uh, again you can see the similar formula m s can go from minus s to plus s uh, with these steps and uh, there are two s plus one possibilities. So uh, this is uh, quite similar to the orbital angular momentum, the spin angular momentum allowed values are quite similar to it. As I already mentioned that the classification uh, there uh, we can classify our particle this is one of the classification scheme. Uh, um, uh, we can have other classification schemes as well but uh, we can classify our fundamental particles based on the spin. And when we say that their uh, spin is integer, uh, then uh, such particles are called bosons. And when we say that their spin is an half integer, where half can could be 3 by 2 as well, we call th those particles as uh, higher spin particles. These are called fermions. So these particles, bosons with a half integer, obey the uh, bo uh, uh, Bose-Einstein statistics. And uh, those particles, fermions, uh, obey uh, Fermi-Dirac statistics. So we can also further divide uh, bosons into two categories that is with a spin 0 and with a spin 1 particles. In, in the spin 0 uh, we do not have any uh, elementary uh, particles uh, uh, which are uh, uh, with a spin 0 or which are uh, making a matter. Um, there are other uh, uh, with, a, with, a, with a pseudo scalar mesons we have uh, uh, whose uh, spin is equal to 0 but not uh, coming from the elementary particles. So we do not know any elementary particle whose spin is 0. But there are some mesons uh, like rows uh, uh, who, uh, whose spin is equal to uh, 0 but they are called pseudo scalar mesons. On the other hand in spin 1 uh, we have uh, mediators all the mediators are uh, of spin 1 for example photon 
has uh, is the mediator of electromagnetic uh, interaction and its spin is 1 similarly gluons are the uh, are the mediators of uh, the strong uh, nuclear force and uh, its spin uh, is 1 and similarly mm, the w plus w minus and z naught which are the mediators of weak interaction weak force their spin is also equal to 1 so these mediators and vector mesons some of the vector mesons uh, also have uh, e uh, their spin equal to 1 so we see that the bosons uh, which which have this uh, integer spin uh, so there are two types spin 0 and spin 1 so pseudo scalar mesons uh, can have spin 0 and similarly all the mediators like photon gluons and w plus w minus z not have uh, spin 1 and uh, vector me some vector mesons also have spin 1 so in principle we say that the bosons with spin um, uh, and also over here the Higgs particle uh, is also of the uh, uh, spin uh, 0. So uh, we see that the bosons are, uh, are those uh, which uh, usually mediate the, um, uh, mediate the forces and they are usually of the spin 1. But on the other hand the fermions uh, they can also be spin 1 by 2 and spin 3 by 2. So for example spin 1 by 2 are quarks and leptons are the uh, spin 1 by 2 particles. So all the six quarks all the flavors of them are spin 1 by 2 and leptons like electrons, uh, muons and taus and their neutrinos there are uh, spin 1 by 2 and the baryon octet uh, where we see that uh, there are some uh, uh, baryons uh, uh, which, uh, which, lie, uh, which have the spin 1 by 2. Uh, so therefore, uh, there are uh, fundamental particles in this uh, uh, spin 1 by 2, most of them are spin 1 by 2, but there are uh, uh, some spin 3 by 2 uh, particles as well in baryon decoupled, we, uh, we know that these are composites. So you see this, the upper line is the uh, elementary particles and the lower li line is the composite particles. So in elementary particles, we have only quarks and leptons and mediators. These are the two types of particles so spin 1 and spin 2 are the uh, most of the elementary particles lie in uh, 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 lie in this uh, range where, where their spin is equal to 1 or spin 1 by 2 okay <coughs> <Excuse me. coughs> so we have seen that the classification based on the spin angular momentum uh, we can classify them so there are other classification schemes as well but uh, this is the most important and uh, mm, uh, and most uh, mostly used uh, classification we can classify the particles on their masses as well and then they have the different generations as we have already discussed but this uh, spin uh, classification based on the spin is uh, is very useful Okay, next uh, we turn to uh, the addition of angular momentum. So, in most cases, it is uh, possible that we are not interested in uh, in uh, spin um, uh, separately and uh, orbital angular momentum separately, but we will be interested in finding out the total angular momentum, which is the sum of the spin angular momentum and orbital angular momentum. This case be the uh, this could be the case in uh, in uh, in case of for example uh, some uh, mesons which are the uh, the sum of two quarks. So although the quarks uh, can have a spin angular momentum and uh, orbital angular momentum, so we would like to know the co uh, composite state or we would like to know that what is the total angular momentum of any composite particle. So for this case we would like to add them even for elementary particle we would like to add the spin angular momentum and orbital angular momentum together. So now it is important to know that how we can add the ar uh, these t uh, any two uh, angular momentum that is why generally I have written that the total angular momentum j could be equal to the sum of the uh, uh, angular momentum j1 and angular momentum j2. So uh, it is important to know that how these are added. So these are not integers by the way. So it is not a simple arithmetic addition because these are vectors and vectors are as you know added uh, differently therefore and they can have also they are quantized so they can have different allowed values. So therefore important to know how we can add them. Specifically, if you want to add the orbital angular momentum and the spin angular momentum. So the total angular momentum j, if it is the sum of the orbital angular momentum and the spin angular momentum, so it is important to know that how we can add orbital and spin angular momentum. And again, it is again uh, important uh, that if we can add the spins together. For example, in, uh, in some meson and baryons, uh, there are quarks uh, coming together. So how we add their spins? Uh, so the general recipe is that uh, how we add the two angular momentum and in a moment I will tell you how this is possible. 
So first of all, uh, we have to specify the state of the particle. And this is uh, specified with the help of the bracket notation. So you see this bracket notation in the first bracket notation, we have L, which, uh, which is because of the orbital angular momentum, and then we have ML, uh, um, uh, which is the uh, possible values are magnetic quantum and uh, orbital quantum number and or we can have another state <coughs> where there is a spin involved and uh, uh, magnetic quantum number because of the spin. So uh, how we read them for example if you are given with uh, some particle whose orbital who is in the orbital state 3 minus 1 that means its uh, orbital angular momentum is uh, uh, 3 and its uh, orbital magnetic quantum number is minus 1. So this, uh, th uh, that's how you read the values. So if you are given this state, so this is 3 and this is minus 1. So 3 corresponds to L and minus 1 corresponds to ML. And similarly, if, if the spin state is given uh, 1 by 2, 1 by 2, for example, if it is an electron, so its uh, S is uh, 1 by 2 and its MS can also be 1 by 2. For example, if it, if it is the hydrogen atom electron, so if, if you are given the hydrogen atom electron, so its state is, uh, its spin is 1 by 2 and its MS is also 1 by 2. And it, it could be in the orbital state 3 minus 1. And now when we add them, as, uh, as you uh, seen that if we want to add the L plus S, if you want to add these two together, so uh, in this state you see that uh, the ML and MS, uh, they are just uh, the Z component of the, uh, of the angular momentum and they are parallel together. So we can just treat them like uh, numbers and we can just add them. But it is not true for L and S. So let's see that uh, if we want to these two, uh, add these two states with the J1M1 and J2M2. In the previous case you've seen that J1 was L and J2 was S and uh, these are the uh, uh, magnetic uh, qu uh, quantum numbers and the, uh, since they are in the same direction in the Z direction so we can just add them like numbers that is M1 plus M2 is equal to M it will give us the total in the final state but we cannot add J1 uh, plus J2 uh, simply uh, okay if there is a situation that J1 and J2 are parallel so we can just add them and if J1 and J2 are anti-parallel then we can just subtract them. But what if they are, uh, they are oriented and they are uh, they having some angle between them. Then there will be some allowed values and we know that these allowed values for J are uh, starting from J1 minus J2 when they are uh, uh, J1 uh, minus J2 to plus 1 and so on going up there to J1 plus J2. So these are the allowed values. So uh, the, the total angular momentum could be this one or could be that one or could be other one depending on the their relative orientation. So uh, we have to find out what is their relative orientation and we have to specify the total allowed values and then we will see that uh, given uh, the M1 and M2 what are the allowed values for the total J that is the sum of the J1 plus J2 and but this is the range uh, from which uh, we can find the uh, total uh, uh, angular momentum. Okay, so in today's lecture we have seen that uh, what is the uh, spin and orbital angular momentum for fundamental particles and then we have seen that uh, uh, quantum mechanically uh, since uh, uh, the uh, components of a angular momentum cannot be specified with 100% accuracy uh, simultaneously therefore uh, we have to work with some other derived quantities uh, for example the uh, square of the spin or the square of the orbital angular momentum or, uh, or the magnitude and then it is it can be specified 100% uh, uh, simultaneously with the other components of uh, orbital or spin ang angular momenta and uh, mm, uh, after doing this uh, we have seen that what are the allowed values uh, for the uh, for them and then we have seen that uh, the classification scheme based on the spin angular momentum that all the fundamental particles can be classified uh, and they could be uh, spin half uh, or sp uh, spin integral spin or half integral spin particles mediators are uh, spin half uh, spin one uh, integer spin and spin one and uh, the uh, uh, matter particles are usually of the spin half uh, particles and then uh, at the end we have seen that how we can add the uh, angular momenta uh, so if they are oriented uh, and they are not parallel or anti parallel parallel um, uh, then we cannot add them simply or we uh, then we have to go towards the um, the uh, all possible allowed values check their orientation 
so uh, in examples uh, you can uh, do uh, some uh, you can take some states uh, and uh, try to add their total angular momenta and uh, there are some uh, certain rules involved there so as an exercise i will uh, ask you uh, to solve those exercise and uh, do some addition of angular momentum with this i thank you all